did you eat today? How much thought did you put into your choice of food? Most people don't really choose. There are so many mixed messages. For such an important decision in our daily life, it's surprising how little effort we put in sometimes. It seems we prefer to change the food available in nature to suit our tastes, putting an end to the very essence of life contained in them. And what about free will? There are alternatives, choices. We just have to find them. In the hustle and bustle of modern life, we are becoming increasingly disconnected from our food supply. Growing our own food and cooking from scratch, practices that were common just a generation ago, are no longer the norm. Packaged and convenience food products have become mainstays for tired, overworked families who are trying to pack so much into their daily schedules, and it's starting to take a toll on their health and well-being. One alternative is a CSA, Community Supported Agriculture, a partnership between farmers and consumers. So a CSA, um, Community Supported or Shared Agriculture, is a partnership between us, the farmers, and our member families. So at the beginning or before the season actually starts, our members um, invest in our farm for either 20 weeks of fresh vegetables or a bi-weekly basket of vegetables, which is for 10 weeks in total. So by our member families investing in our farm, um, it allows us to meet some of the higher expenses at the beginning of the season, which is purchasing uh, our seeds, bringing in our certified organic compost um, and also any tools we have to purchase for the season ahead. It helps contribute to all of those bills and also any expenses we have running the farm during the actual season. So the members actually get to see where their money goes at the farm. Um, so it's nice that they know that rather than their food dollars just going into a, a chain store, it's actually supporting a local farmer and it's staying within their local community. My decision to join a CSA removed so many of my own perceived barriers to eating real food. So I had one decision and that was to join the CSA and from that decision I removed so many other decisions that I used to make on a weekly basis like what vegetables I was going to buy that week and whether those vegetables would be organic or not organic. Um, whether uh, they were going to be loaded with harmful chemicals and pesticides and other things that would potentially impact my health long term. So I just have so much peace of mind knowing that the food that I'm eating is um, not only uh, sourced locally but it's also organic and just the fact that I'm supporting uh, small local farmers means uh, a lot to me. It makes me feel really good. Our farm is split 50-50, so we do um, the vegetables and we also do produce um, pasture-raised pork, chicken, turkey and we also have an apiary as well, so we also do honey, uh, raw honey um, within season. The vegetable baskets themselves will contain anything from 8 to 12 different seasonal vegetables. Um, so at the beginning of the season, which always makes people a little nervous, it's going to be full of more leafy greens, so kales or mustard greens, Asian greens like pak choys and mizuna. Um, more things like radish, spring turnips, peas, garlic scapes and then as the season progresses so does the bounty that they receive so as you get into summer you're going to see your tomatoes your cucumbers your zucchini eggplant sweet peppers all of those nice vegetables and then as we get to fall you're going to see more of your potatoes um, carrots like a heavier 
vegetables that are kind of more associated with within those seasons. I suppose really it was a, an enjoyment of good food cooking. Um, back in England we used to shop at local farmers markets. Um, so really we started off when we moved to Canada 11 years ago. Um, it was something that was initially a hobby um, and something that we used to raise just vegetables and meat for ourselves and then progressively it's come into a full-time business. Um, I'm originally a teacher trainer for stock Pilates and that's what brought me to Canada. Um, they headhunted me to head up a facility in Montreal. You were in there? I, I worked in IT in the UK for 20 years um, and basically needed to get away from that. So. Yeah, and I just think we enjoy food, we wanted to have more of awareness of how it was grown and raised and wanted more control over that and that really led us into setting up the farm here. Yeah. What we mean by real food is things like vegetables and poultry and eggs and seafood and fish and fruit and nuts and seeds. Things that we would have been able to either hunt or gather way back in the day. And the reason for this is we're not trying to turn people into uh, cavemen again, and we're not going back to loincloths and starting fire with sticks. But what we're trying to do is um, get people to really eat foods that are nutrient dense, anti-inflammatory and easy for their bodies to digest. And that whole eating food that we can hunt or gather gives a really good framework for doing that. Modern day foods can be really hard for our systems to digest. They can promote inflammation and just make people feel all around unwell. At the end of the day, the more whole, unprocessed, natural food that we can eat, the better our health will be. So Sally, who is a CSA right for? Hopefully for everyone, but a CSA doesn't necessarily accommodate everyone's needs. So we always say to people that they need to be willing to experiment. Um, that they need to be willing to cook and if not necessarily they don't want to cook uh, maybe preserving as well um, mm -hmm. because it can be overwhelming when you get a box of vegetables that may contain, yeah. contain 12 different items in it um, so they've got to be willing to take on that challenge mm -hmm. um, we always sometimes suggest to people who are who want to make changes to their to the way they eat mm -hmm. that maybe to start off with a bi-weekly basket rather than having a basket every week yeah. um, because then it allows them to slowly introduce that food into their diet and right. get used to cooking fresh food um, and also getting used to the idea of maybe preserving or canning some for winter stores mm -hmm. um, yeah it, it's nice to kind of know that in December you're still eating stuff Absolutely. that's from your local farm. Yeah. Um, I think the biggest thing is is being open-minded to it. We're going to throw things like tomatillas, kohlrabi, fennel, um, yeah. the greens as well. You're going to have a mixture of bitter greens to some sweet greens. So again, it's getting people people's palates used to those different yeah. flavours. I've got to say that's been one of my favourite things for sure. It's just. Uh, no, sometimes there's surprises in my vegetable box. I'm like, what is a tomatillo? And it's funny that you mentioned that one because uh, that's exactly what happened to me. So the tomatillos came, and instead of you know having 30 tomatillos go out in yep. the composter, I was motivated. You know, it just Excellent. brings you to uh, find a, a tomatillo recipe, and now I have this um, green olive. Uh, tomatillo nice. salsa that's amazing <laughs> and it's a staple and you can yep. can it and you can yep. eat it in December and it's just been so exciting to Good. Uh, find different uses for some of these odd vegetables and I think that open-mindedness is really key yes. in that whole process. And I think also doing a little bit of research like we also will yeah. provide a newsletter with recipe ideas. I love how you do that. <laughs> but I also think people have to be willing to find they other sure recipes yeah. themselves and whether it's on the internet or buying a, a really good cookbook that focuses yeah. more on vegetables then it's kind of a little bit of both ways will help you but people also have to put a yes. little bit of work into it it's kind of that whole teach a man to fish philosophy Definitely. you can do everything for them but that might not serve them yeah. very well yeah. so i'm curious what yeah. do you shop for at the grocery store very little because mm. we also do preserve an awful lot of what we grow for winter and we store in a root cellar. Um, so things we shop for are coconut oil, olive oil, salt, pepper, um, some herbs that we don't grow here. Um, and then, yeah, very, very, very little fish yeah. because 
we don't have a problem with the ratio. Yeah. Um, but everything else, the meat we raise here at the yeah. farm, so that's pork, chicken and turkeys. And then we source our beef locally. Um, so that again, we actually know the farmer who raises our beef. Yeah. Um, but very, it, it's just like those little bits of essentials we get yeah. from the grocery store. So I think Does people- Does it throw the cashier for a loop? Oh, definitely. They all look at us very oddly because there's nuts there and yeah. all, all of those chocolate. things. Chocolate, 90% yeah. chocolate, all, all the essentials. Yeah, yeah of course, um, right. But we never have vegetables right. or if it's kind of later in the season, there could be some bananas there mm. or all those kind of things that we can't grow. Right, um, avocados. Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah. definitely. And it, it, it's oh, always funny. So funny. Yeah, yeah it's so funny. It it's funny to see their face and then you're comparing everyone else's trolleys. Yeah. <laughs> so we feel that it's the C our CSA customers that benefit the most from the CSA and they're our focus. Um, but also the fact that we farm organically and we use organic practices. All of our seed is either organic or sustainably sourced. So we feel that the land actually um, benefits from the way that we farm and from our farm itself. Um, but also the local area benefits because the dollars stay local. Um, we support customers in Hastings County and across into Northumberland County, but we have made the choice to stay local and to benefit those people. There's always risks, um, but those are shared risks and the CSA members, when they actually sign up, we actually emphasize that you are sharing those risks that the farmer also takes on those risks as well with you. So biggest things are weather and pests. Um, so if there's a drought, hail that destroys a certain crop, then our customers realise and our, our member families realise that they're not going to maybe get as many tomatoes if they've been damaged by hail. Or as we had in 2012, we had a really horrific drought um, within this community. So we weren't able to get 12 items in everyone's boxes. We could only get 10. Everyone was incredibly supportive. Members came out and helped us water. So it, it brings, even though there's risks, it still brings that community together at the farm to, to share those risks. And, and also, I, basically the 2012 drought changed an awful lot of um, the processes that we use on the farm to try and mitigate those um, those kind of situations. So we started using mulches more, we started using landscape fabrics and things like this that basically holds the moisture in the ground. Um, the one thing that we are short of here on the farm is water. It's a very poor area for, for water supply. So we have to try and make the most of the water that we do get. Um, so that's one of, or some of the things that we've done. But also with the bugs, it's very much a, a manual thing. Yeah. And on a, on a morning and in the evening, basically we're out picking potato bugs off of the potatoes and um, cucumber, cu beetles. cucumber beetles and things like that. So it's a very manually intensive uh, way of farming, um, but it's the way we've chosen to farm. Um, so we have a, a really wide variety of people that do join a CSA. I'd like to say that all our members are very open-minded. They're up for trying something different and trying to find different ways to cook it. Um, we love getting the recipes sent in by yep. people who are like, oh, I'm not going to try that. Kohlrabi, what's that? Don't like that. And, and we learn as much from them as they learn yeah. from us. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. So. so, yeah, it's, it's a real mixed identity who joins the CSA. But it's, I don't know, it, it is, it's out there for everyone. I just think you... I think people need to be um, ready to try something different. It's not always going to be potatoes and carrots. So if you're up for a change, then a CSA is definitely right for you. In the end, food is something special and intimate. It's not only about nutrition. It's about sharing, honesty and identity. Food is our common ground and our universal experience. We need to learn and unlearn our choices. So, did you eat today?